Well, it's December 1st, and that means it's cold outside, and that cold came into Lender Court tonight. Welcome to The Rebound, presented by Q30 Television. I'm Mari Hirschgordon, alongside men's basketball beat reporter Dylan Fearon, where the Quinnipiac University Bobcats tonight fell to the University of Albany. Great Danes, 58-54. to And Dylan, you've been watching this team now this year, five games in. What were some of your takeaways? You know, four-point loss at home, but I see a lot of positives. Daniel Harris continues to show how good he is at basketball. He can score, he can shoot, he can pass. He's rebounding, he's playing tremendous on-the-ball defense. Tom Ward couldn't ask for a better stat line from Daniel Harris tonight when the team only put up 54 points. 19 points, eight rebounds, four assists, couple steals, no turnovers, and he played the most minutes on the team with 33 minutes. You cannot ask more from a, from a Juco transfer, only in his fifth game at the Division One level. Quinnipiac went into the locker room with a 26 to 23 advantage. Quinnipiac trailed most uh, of the first half, but caught some fire late in the first half due to a nice spark by Abdullahi Bundu off the bench with Chase Daniels being in foul trouble. But then it was a whole different story come the second half, Dylan. You know, once they came out of the locker room, it was cold as can be for the for Quinnipiac. Giovanni McLean and James Ford Jr., the two oldest players in the team, and your two best scorers on the team, only had two points combined in the second half. That cannot happen if you want to win basketball games. I mean, two points combined from your oldest players, your two top scorers, that cannot happen. The scoring ended up going on to Daniel Harris, who we just talked about, 17 points in the second half. But you cannot win basketball games if Giovanni McLean isn't shooting the rock and James Ford Jr. isn't making threes. Giovanni McLean and James Ford Jr., two three-point specialists. Quinnipiac combined three for 21 from three this game but now let's go on to the defensive end in the second half and Quinnipiac played great defense in the first half 23 percent from the field for Albany but then it was 43 percent in the second half for the Great Danes. Right Albany was just able to get to the rack really easily finish get to the free throw line I mean the game was won at the free throw line for Albany they had way more free throw attempts than Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac only went to the line a couple times only had seven free throws that was that's where the game was won Albany was shooting way better in the second half hitting threes and getting to the rack. So now Quinnipiac heads to Buffalo for their first MAC weekend. A long trip up to Niagara and up to Canisius. Some of your thoughts beforehand going in? It's never easy to win in Buffalo. I mean, we've seen from Quinnipiac two years ago, it took a new Marshan and buzzer beater to defeat Niagara. And last year, Niagara defeated Quinnipiac in double overtime. So it's never easy to beat Niagara. In terms of Canisius, I'm looking forward to matchups because Canisius has uh, Central Connecticut transfer Malcolm McL McL McMillan excuse me, coming in this year in his grad year. Phil Valenti is back for his junior year. Uh, they can rebound Jamal Reynolds, you know, Cassius Robertson's looking good. So I'm looking forward to matchups with Giovanni McLean and Malcolm McMillan. It should be a very interesting game and it should be a very tough road trip for Quinnipiac. Tip time for that one is 7 o'clock at the Gallagher Center in Niagara, New York. The next night Quinnipiac will face the Golden Griffins and Jim Barron of Canisius. For more information, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Q30 Sports and check out our website at Q30Television.com. For men's basketball beat reporter Dylan Fearon, I'm Mari Hirsch-Gordon.